and welcome to the Black Hat Bushcraft channel. Today I wanted to have a little discussion and demonstration with the WC Knives Alaskan Scout Knife. And this is that knife here. This is a production knife which is made exclusively for Great Northern Knives up in Alaska. Uh, a while back my friend Jeff Barber who is the owner of Great Northern Knives contacted me and asked me would I be interested in having a chance to work with this knife a little bit and get a better feel for it and if I liked it do a review on it and so I told Jeff I would definitely be interested to do that and so they sent me this knife down this one is on loan to me from Sean who also works at Great Northern Knives I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to work with your knife Sean and I have enjoyed using this knife I've had it in my possession now for about six to seven weeks and I've been using it off and on just so I can get familiar with it and kind of better understand the knife's capabilities. Anytime I do a review on a knife or even talk about a knife like this, unless it's an initial re, uh, review or initial thoughts uh, video, I like to use it for a while and get a good feel for it so that way I truly understand the knife. And I feel like I have a good grasp on this knife and what it's best suited to. And so that's what I wanted to do today was to talk to you about it and kind of show you the knife and use it for a few basic tasks. Just in case you're not familiar with it, this will give you a chance to look at the WC Knives Alaskan Scout. Let's get started. Just before I get started on the demonstration, I wanted to give you a closer look at the knife and just the overall profile of this knife. Talk about a few of the specs. Um, initially looking at this knife, I'm sure that you can see a very strong Kephart influence to the design of this knife. And you can see this classic spear point, which has been very popular for many years. And for good reason, because it is a very general purpose uh, profile it can do a lot of different tasks and do them well um, initially uh, a spear point like this is a good skinning knife and the reason being is once you get that point up under the skin that back hump right here will help lift it and help separate the skin from the flesh keep the tip of the knife out of the flesh and assist with those tasks so initially that was one of the reasons for this design in the light that I have right now, hopefully you can see something that's sort of unique to William's knives or something that he really emphasizes in his knives, and that is his woodsman's grind. Um, some people might call this a multi-grind. I guess sort of it is, but in a way it's not because this bevel from here to the tip is the same thing. He uses 11 half, 12 degree uh, bevel to the cutting edge, but here you have that strong Scandi, which is great for its wedging properties when you're working with wood, when you want to split in to get dry materials like batoning, or when you want to hog off a lot of wood when you're carving uh, things down. Um, but as it goes to the tip, it blends into that almost full flat grind or that high blended saber grind as he refers to it. And what that does is it thins the blade down, as William refers to it as like a distal taper. And this makes an excellent slicing portion to your blade. So when you're doing things like processing meat and vegetables and even fruit in your camp kitchen, this gives you that thin slicing blade for those tasks, but yet you still retain this strong scandy portion here for the splitting and for your bushcraft or woodcraft uh, woodworking um, tasks when you're in camp. So this knife really lends itself to do many different tasks and again, do them well. The knife is made from 530 seconds AEBL stock, um, so it is a stainless knife. Um, and one of the things I found by owning many of William's knives in AEBL is it holds up just as easy as 01, holds its edge longer. And um, as William likes to say, a lot of times he believes it gets sharper than the 01. Um, his 01 is pretty impressive to me. I have several knives in 01 uh, made by WC, but um, the AEBL does get very razor sharp and it does hold its edge for a long time. And the beauty of it, again, like unlike a lot of stainless steels, is it's just as easy to hone up as an 01 or even a 1095 blade um, with no problems. Some people may be intimidated when it comes to honing a knife like this, but again, the angle is the same from the base to the tip, so you'll have no problems with that. These change in angles here or not affecting your ability to sharpen or hone this knife. Um, my initial impression when I first drew this knife out of the sheath is it had more heft than I really expected to it. But being a five inch blade and being 
five thirty second stock. I mean, it is a, a heavy knife, um, not heavy in a bad way, but if you want more of that one tool type option or even a survival style knife, a do all type knife, this one could very well fit that bill. It's not really as much of a finesse type bushcraft knife. For example, I have with me on my hip my Woodsman's Classic. This is definitely more of a bushcraft specific type knife with that full Scandi grind. It's a one eighth uh, of a, an inch thick stock so it's a little lighter and more nimble knife but again this knife can do all of those types of tasks but yet retain the ability to be a stronger more hefty one tool option type knife so i just wanted to discuss a few of those specs with you and uh and kind of talk about the knife again aebl is a stainless steel so you're not going to be able to throw sparks off the spine of the knife with a hard rock but your knife is not going to patina or rust very easily even when you're processing things like vegetables or fruits or woods uh, a lot of green woods that have tannins and things that would tend to quickly patina up an o1 blade that's not going to be a concern with this aebl so the maintenance is not quite as critical um, knife maintenance is always critical but not as critical as with a high carbon steel blade so i just wanted to mention that that there are a lot of benefits to the aebl the only one that i can think of that's not a benefit is just the loss of the ability to strike sparks but for me not a big deal i carry uh, implements to make fire with no no issue so that's not something I use um, very, very much at all, if ever. Um, so anyway, just wanted to mention a few of the specs of the knife and let you be more familiar with the design. And now let's use the knife and see how it performs. All right, so let's do a little light batoning with this knife. And in my opinion, that is an important task that a knife like this should be able to perform in case we need to get to the center of some materials uh, to get dry material for fire making, things like that. So, as with any knife task, technique is important. We're not going to beat the knife as hard as we can, but just lightly tap it through. Another thing with batoning, kind of getting off on a side notice, choose the right materials. Softer woods, choose the correct diameter. Don't try to baton something as big as the blade is long. Can see I'm just gently tapping that through. And to be expected, this is no issue for this knife. Back here on that scandy portion, it wedges right in and helps to spl split that material down just as we would expect. Perfect. So it'll definitely perform this task and perform it well. Now that I have some smaller material processed down, one of the things I always like to do is see how a knife performs when I want to carve a feather stick. And that's an important uh, task to be able to make fire in wet conditions get some very fine material that will dry out and combust very quickly. And with this knife, this is pretty much an effortless task. You start right back here with that Scandi grind, tilt the knife so that the grind mates to the wood, just like if you were honing or sharpening the knife, and then just trace it down the blade. And because of that profile getting a little bit wider towards that belly, it kind of grabs the wood and it helps hold it in place, so to speak, so you can just follow down and make those feathers. And to be honest with you, I was watching myself do this on the camera instead of looking at what I'm doing. Probably not a good idea, but the knife really does do a great job with this task. I'm very impressed with its feather sticking ability. Because of this handle and how comfortable it is, I feel like I could do this all day without suffering from hand fatigue. And that's very important. A lot of times we think about the blade, but the handle is where you're interacting with the knife most. And so a comfortable handle is really, really critical. And that's one thing that William has definitely got down, is making a comfortable handle on a knife. As you can see, feather stick, check, no problem. 
So this is my progress within five minutes or less of feather sticking with this knife. It can definitely perform the task and do it well. The next thing that I like to see with any knife that I work with is how well you can use it in different grip positions. And so one of the most important positions that we use out here in the field is the chest lever grip. And so I like to see is a knife controllable and comfortable when I use it in this position. And as with all of William's knives, this three position grip just is perfect for my hand. It just uh, it feels comfortable and it makes using it in these different grip positions very easy. As you can see, this thing's just biting through this wood with no problem. So for tasks like making points or rounding off or beaver chewing through, whatever, it's very comfortable in this position and the blade lends itself to that very well. Another position that I like to use often is to draw cut with the knife. And so what I'll do is I'll use this little almost like a choil right here and grab it with my ring and pinky fingers and then use my thumb and my point finger and even my middle finger to grab hold of the blade. And what that does is it gives me a lot of control and it will allow me to do things like this to draw cut. And this is a very safe way and controlled way to cut through material and it allow, allows you to see your blade in contact with the material which will help you get better results. But this knife is very comfortable in that position and right here where the blade subtly swells into that belly, that little area there, we kind of refer to that as the sweet spot on these knives with the woodsman's grind. But that really is an amazing little place for this type of uh, technique it just performs so well for this and it's one of the things that people that use Williams knives really rave about but as you can see this knife is very comfortable works very well in this position with these draw cuts so check for that and I'm very pleased with how it performs in that way. All right, so now let's see how the knife performs doing a couple of basic bushcraft notches. We can do a number seven notch, a saddle notch, and then we'll do a bale notch for hanging a pot on. Let's see how it performs. So one of the most common notches that we use in bushcraft is a simple number seven notch. And that's a very simple notch to create. We just simply make a little rocking stop cut there with the uh, knife and you can also twist the material to create such a stop cut which is just a back stop so to speak so that we can push the blade in and then reinforce that stop cut and remove that material and as you can see this knife makes a nice number seven with no problem and basically any knife can do this this is not a, a very complicated task but it's one that we should practice doing often another notch that may be a little more uh, finesse is a saddle notch. It's just kind of rounded out. So what I've found with this knife is because it is a little bit thicker here with this belly is you have to kind of come up to the tip and I use my thumb and I kind of use both the material and the knife together to get that effect and just cut in from one side. We turn our material around from the other side and easily create that nice saddle notch. And this would be something that we might use in constructing like a pack frame or putting things together. And as you can see, no problem. The key is just finding out where on the blade best performs the task that you're trying to complete. What I'm going to do now is come down here on this opposite end and create a bell notch. And what we would do with that is just make an X. Make a stop cut one and then stop cut number two just like that. Okay, I'm going to reinforce those a little bit. Of course, you can baton your knife into the material, and that makes this very quick and easy, but my baton's across the way, so I'm just going to do it the old-fashioned way without. Now what you do is you take your knife and come in here and carve this material out. And a lot of times with this, it's kind of easy to just sweep your knife back in, but because of the belly of this knife, this may not be its most perfect task or the the most suited to design for this but it definitely can do it that belly wants to cut in a little past the stop cut there so you have to be careful with it there we go in other words my woodsman's junior and my woodsman's classic really perform this a little easier 
they do it almost effortlessly but this knife again is very capable of that just try to cut in here you can tell that scop cuts not deep enough and with those the woodsman's junior i can just swing the back of my blade in and come right into that stop cut with this i have to be a little careful because of the blade shape not to overdo it So this is one of those tasks, the knife is capable and it can do it, but it may not be what it specializes in. But again, a general knife is gonna do some things very well. It's gonna be able to do most things, but it may not be as good as something, a specialty knife. And it, for example, you know, a little bushcraft knife with a sharp point will probably perform this task a little easier. But if you get to know your knife and you use it often, you can make it work for things. Notice how I'm grabbing hold of that blade. That's where that handle design is, allows this knife to become so much more flexible. Instead of it being a big, heavy five inch knife, it becomes a very short two or three inch knife when I grab it that way. And that's what I love about this handle design is it just allows your knife to become so much more flexible because I can comfortably and controllably hold it in that, in that fashion. So again, that big knife becomes a small knife and allows me to more safely and controllably make these little finesse cuts. I always say this is one of the most important notches to practice with a knife. If you can do this one, all the other ones are pretty simple compared to that. And as you're about to see, you can definitely do it. So that would be definitely an acceptable pot notch. A little splinter in there, but yeah that would definitely perform and do the job well so if you can make that notch with your knife most likely any of the other bushcraft notches can be done fairly simply all right so pass another important thing that we look for oftentimes with a knife like this is a very good sharp spine that we can use for processing materials for example this piece of tulip poplar that i have here has some nice dry bark on it and I just use the back of that knife like a spoke shave, process that material down into fine fibers, which makes an excellent center of a tinder bundle or bird's nest. We'll also readily take a spark from a ferro rod. And again, this can be like the center of your bird nest if you're making flint and steel fire or a bow drill fire when you introduce your ember. So this is an important qualification for any field knife in my opinion. And after all that, one of the most important things that this knife needs to be able to do is to process down food in the camp kitchen. Now it'd be nice if I had a, a fresh rabbit to process down for you, but one, that doesn't go well on YouTube and I just don't have it at my disposal at the moment. So I'm gonna process a cucumber. Now, if you've ever tried to cut through vegetables with a Scandi grind, it basically, if it's real sharp, it'll do a good job, but basically it wedges and breaks food open. But up here at the tip of this knife, you can easily slice through this material and get very thin slices, which is excellent when you're processing meat, removing meat from the bone. That's just one of the things about these multi-grind or woodsman's grind knives that William makes that I just love is the fact that you can process it down this food, make these thin, fine cuts, it just works really well okay and you can see I'm getting very nice thin slices there just does a great job man that cucumber smells good mm. best part of any knife review is when you get to eat food at the end all right, so hopefully you guys can see that this knife is quite capable to perform just about any task that you might need for a belt knife to perform out in the woods. 
whether it be more bushcrafty type tasks like notching and things like that or processing food and game and to even more of the hard use tasks like batoning and creating fire materials and so forth this knife is quite capable and while this one is not particularly my favorite of the WC knife designs I really like the knife and if I were in the woods for multiple days and this was my only knife I'd feel quite confident about it um, I do really like this knife and I'd be proud to own one of them at some point I'd like to thank Jeff and I'd like to also thank Sean for allowing me to work with this knife and it's been a pleasure and this one will be heading back towards you very soon Sean um, if you guys are interested in purchasing this knife, this is an exclusive from Great Northern Knives. This one goes directly up to Alaska for their store. I don't believe William sells these directly. So if you're interested, I'll put the contact information down below for Great Northern Knives. And uh, Jeff and Sean are both awesome people, and I would highly recommend that you check uh, out the knife. I'm sure that they either one would be happy to answer your questions and to give you all the information um, if you're interested. I would also urge you to check out WC Knives com and look at William's other designs if this isn't exactly what you're looking for but you're interested you may find something that's exactly what you're looking for with his uh, with his website so I encourage you and unconditionally recommend to you WC knives so with all that said I want to thank you guys for your time and interest and for all your support and kind words here on the black hat bushcraft channel if you have not subscribed I hope that you will go ahead and subscribe I do have quite a few links down below in the description box please check those and any support that you provide to the black hat bushcraft channel whether it's through the self-reliance outfitters affiliate page the Amazon influencer page any support is always greatly appreciated Thank you again. I hope you guys are doing well, and I look forward to talking to you with another video again very soon. And until that one, take care. God bless. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see similar content, please subscribe to the Black Hat Bushcraft channel. Thank you for your time and interest, and I hope you'll come back soon. Take care.